Women in engineering experience a very unique journey with a unique set of challenges and opportunities. And to tell us more, Faith, I think you are well placed to explain this to us. You came to Europe from Uganda and followed a passion for engineering. Tell us a little bit more about that journey. Thank you, Pamela. So I was born and raised uh, in Kampala, Uganda, in a family of seven. And when we were growing up, it was always typical that you had to do medicine if you were really good, good in your grades. So my parents always thought Faith was, you know, brilliant in class that I would get on and do medicine. But while I was in secondary school, I actually got an interest in fixing things. I was always fixing my friends' watches, clocks and things like that. And although I did well in biology, I actually did not enjoy it. And so when I came to choose my A-levels, I then decided to take physics, chemistry and mathematics. So the, the first thing was my parents were supportive with me making my choices, my own choices. But also I was at a good secondary school that had lots of old girls who would come and share their stories. And it was good to actually see engineers as well as doctors. So that's how my journey be began. So I studied electrical engineering at Macquarie University and uh, worked briefly in the telecommunications industry, then decided to do uh, to take further studies. Um, so I was, I was quite fortunate to get a scholarship to come and study to the United Kingdom. And you know, I thought about what area that I wanted to do a master's in. And energy was one of those spaces because, you know, medicine, my parents always say, you'll always have a job. Then I thought about it and thought, actually, energy, electricity, it powers everything, hospitals, digital computers. So I thought, actually, that's where I need to be. And so that is how I then came here, to, came to the United Kingdom. And coming from East Africa, which is very nice and sunny, uh, you know, um, um, predictable times because sunrise and sunset are all at 7 a.m. and 7 p.m. all year round. My first, I had to go through like a bit of a culture adjustment was really you know, getting to grips with the weather. So university usually started in the winter. So we'd finish lectures and it was 4 p.m. and it was dark. <laughs> and in my body, my system, when it became dark, it was time to go to, you know, go to bed. Um, so one of the first challenges I really faced was actually how to build relationships uh, with my peers at, un at university because I realized that, you know, when, it was, when we finished university, most of the peers said, well, let's go out, let's do this. But it was dark. I was just thinking, I just need to go <laughs> and have a rest. So I did not actually realize at that point in time that when people said, let's go out and have a drink, it was actually a call out or that is the relaxed environment where we'll actually get to know each other. So I did not realize it my first year at university. Um, but then later on, because I probably, I, I, I look around and see how things are happening. And then I realized, oh, actually, I should have gone <laughs> out, you know, to do something. So I, I kept that in my mind. And so when I started my, uh, my career at uh, National Grid, so I joined as a direct entry graduate, power systems engineer, learned a lot of the work that I do on the job. Um, so I re re remembered that from my university. And then I realized, oh, actually, that's why I needed to go to the students' union. I needed to volunteer. I needed to do all these small little things because that is the point at which we actually interact and make friendships. That was completely different from Uganda, where I come from. I just can meet you on the street, have a chat with you, invite you to my house. There's, you know, it's very easy to make those kinds of uh, connections. So that was the first challenge, you know, of course, adjusting to the weather and as well um, adjusting to some of the cultural uh, bits that were different uh, to where I'm from in Uganda. That's absolutely fascinating. I'm sure the weather was a big adjustment. But I want to talk to you a little bit more about that cultural aspect because, I mean, there's clear differences and it, it must have been quite an adjustment for you. You know, in, in terms of when we were talking before this interview, you, you talked about, you know, how to be seen and how to be heard to be seen. Talk to us a little bit more about that. Okay. So they actually... I would say two bits of culture that I, I could maybe expand on. So the first one was um, back in Uganda where I'm from, it's very hierarchical. So if one, because you know, I had a manager before and my manager was, you know, you know, looked at in a certain way, talked to in a certain way, which was very different when I came here to the UK that actually you could have a, you know, a casual conversation with your manager. You could actually engage and have 
not, not an argument, but you could actually have a different perspective from your manager. That was really alien to me. I, and so realizing, because those are some of the things that you, you expected to do here, but naturally I looked at my managers and thought, I just have to you know, treat them in a certain way. So that was one of the first adjustments you know, surprised when a manager comes and says, hello to you, how are you doing? I'm thinking, oh, this is very strange. Um, but it was really not, really nice. And I think that that's, that's the good thing about traveling and being exposed. So I was exposed to a different culture. I thought, oh, God, these are fellow human beings just like me. And we're all here trying to do a job. Uh, and so that was the first thing that the relation, the way that I relate to management was quite different here. But what that meant as well is that I needed then to start to become comfortable to, you know, <laughs> to have a different perspective. And uh, probably I'd say that, you know, I was not necessarily raised to have an opinion. So back in Uganda, it was, our culture was quite different. You know, even our parents, we quite respected them. Um, but you, you'd never, you know, you'd never argue with your parent or disagree with your parent. But I'm a parent now here and I see my own children. They have their points of views. They air them all the time. So I came from, you know, a culture where I was not really airing my views uh, to a culture where it is important important for you to air your views so people can know what ideas you have. So that was an adjustment that I had to make, <laughs> yes. And actually one of the things that really helped me is uh, uh, somewhere early in my career I worked with someone who was quite different from me, who was very open and, you know, open to, you know, to, to, to share their perspective. And just by working closely with them and sharing my perspectives with them, it just helped me come out of my box, my little box, if that's it. And the validation that this person was able to say, oh, actually, Faith, you have a good point. I felt, oh, actually, I do have some good points. So that helped me with my confidence uh, to, to say that, yeah, I have actually valid contributions to make. And unless I make them, um, they will not be hard. Uh, but that was really the biggest thing for me is like if you're in the room, sat there saying nothing it's like you know you don't exist uh, and then being able to to learn to be able to speak up more is something I've had to learn something I have I've had to be intentional about to say okay I'm going to this meeting what's this meeting about what can I say what can I ask and especially when you're probably the only woman in the room it's even more important for, for, for me to be able to speak up. And I think over my journey, I've then realized that I do actually have valid points, valid things to say. And that's something that then I do encourage, you know, either people from a similar cultural background to myself that absolutely it's, it's the right thing to, to speak up and share your perspectives because sometimes you can just change the direction just because of your contribution. Thank you for sharing that. Faith, you... You recently won an award uh, as one of the top 50 women engineers. Congratulations for Thank that. You. Uh, what does that award mean to you? And, and why are these types of awards important? Yes. So I think, uh, so this is, uh, you know, it was really, I don't know, so humbling. And I was really quite, um, really taken aback uh, to, to win such a prestigious award. It's, it's really just that bit about the validation, the recognition that actually you, you, are, you, are, you are really good. Um, so it was such a, a joy. Uh, it was basically not just for myself, my whole family and my country, Uganda, where I'm from, just to hear that, you know, I, you know I'm one of the top 50 engineers, you know, across the United Kingdom was, uh, was wonderful. Um, but yeah, I think, you know, on my career journey, uh, a lot of the things that I have done, it's been really good to, to be able to look ahead and see people doing them. I remember when I became a mom and I was thinking, oh my God, how am I going to do my career? But then seeing moms who are managers, who are senior leaders and having conversations with them helped me know that that is possible. So I think a big part of this um, Awards is to really highlight role models to show people that, you know, it is indeed uh, possible. And that's one of the things that I am always keen to, you know, even in my work, you know, because I, I, I volunteer and support, uh, run an internship for my organization to show them that it is import, important. So I think we have the saying that you need to see, see it to be it. Um, I have seen that happen in my own life, and I think it's important that we have a full range of models out there. But then as well, um, yeah, sometimes, you know, that, uh, you know, the external validation helps. It's like, oh, actually, yes, indeed, you know, you are a top engineer, you know, faith, believe in yourself. Uh, and that just, you know, spurs you on to do, you know, uh, 
bigger and greater things. So it is really a recognition of just the career journey, the, the contributions that I have made to the industry, and uh, just that visible role model to show anyone out there who's thinking, you know, uh, I'm a mom or I'm in a foreign country and I want to do engineering or whatever other career, that it is indeed, uh, indeed possible. A very inspiring message. Thank you so much for sharing your insights with us, Faith. And for more insights, be sure to join the Enlid community.